Is there an attack going on on God, on morality, on our country, in our public schools? Teachers give vulgar awards to their high school students. It is time that we know what's being taught in our national schools and our na to our nation's children. Think about that. Take a look and, and share the shocking event that took place in our schools in America. Take a look. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. We're going to be talking to this teacher. This is teacher up in Washington. Uh, the name of the school is um, Belling Bellingham High School. Bellingham High School. And uh, it is amazing what she did. But she had a school award ceremony take place. And a mother writes a um, a message, an email to the school system there saying, I was shocked and I was in tears at the school award ceremony that was just, it was, this is the kind of trash that's being taught in our school. She was just so shocked. Mm. And when this segment comes up, I want to encourage you to, to watch it yourself first and then um, decide whether you want your children to watch it or not. But realize if you just naively say, well, I'm not going to watch it. Well, your kid's going to see it in high school. This right. happened in high school. You need to know what's taking place in your high school. And quite often, we're turning our eyes away from things that, that, that our children are having in their eyes all the time. Mm -hmm. And we're wondering what the conflict is. And a lot of the conflict is, is that the schools are not working with us. The schools are not working with the parents. And it's like, we have to begin to think about taking this mountain called the education mountain and say, you know what? It needs to be of God again. It needs yeah. to need to... Repent for what we've done and understand the education system is your system. It's a government by the people and for the people. Uh, even if it's federal fun federally funded, when people say, well, it's out of our hands because the, the government, it's you. It's we, the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice. You, they represent you. Mm -hmm. So you can talk to your Washington folks. You can talk to your state folks. You can start, talk to your county and city and local folks that you have representing you, and you can say, stop it. Just stop it. You know, if you want to do stuff like this, don't do it in our schools. Mm -hmm. Right. It just starts. It's free America. Go, Just go do something. Nobody will attend, and it won't be successful, and it will fail. But we're not going to fund you destroying our children. We're not going to fund that. And I'll never forget when I came home one day, and... um. My children at that particular time were going through homeschool and they've been to public school, homeschool, and a combination of all that, whatever you know, they felt right at the time to do. They enjoyed a little bit of all of it. And uh, our neighbor and one of the, uh, uh, our neighbor had a young, young boy who gave, he was given an assignment by the schools. And his assignment was to pick a God hmm. and build an image of his throne. And so he picks Zeus. I didn't know anything about this. I'm walking in and I, I see my kids and this, this is a you know, real nice kid. They're helping him out. I was like, what, what are y'all doing? It's like, oh, like a popsicle sticks and all this mm -hmm. kind of stuff going on. It's like, we're, we're building a throne to Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what? In our house? Right. Where did this come from? Like, how did, how did, this whole conversation ended up in my house. <laughs> I was like, where did this come from? Right. I mean, my children didn't even, didn't even know about, you know, that aspect of it. And so finally, when I calmly just like, okay, okay, God forgive me for what happened in my home. I'm sorry that <laughs> a throne of a God that's no God at all is being built. I started asking the question. I said, you know, what, what happened? Well, well, <laughs> Well, you know, how did it talk it to me? Talk to me you know, <laughs> um, and the kid says, we had an assignment from school and this is what we're supposed to do. And so I said, okay, all right. And I said, well, this is your new assignment. I want you to build the throne of God, <laughs> the glassy sea, the 24 elders. And hopefully mm -hmm. I'll have a picture of that. We'll put that up on the torch. Yeah. They did a wonderful job. And then, they brought it out before the church and they actually explained the awesomeness of the throne of God, the true throne that sits in the center of the universe, surrounded by an emerald rainbow with four living creatures who cry, holy, 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 Lord God almighty. 
not no Zeus, Zeus, Zeus. And I so I called the school board because the school board did that. They allowed that because they're the ones that determine who's going to be working in the school system. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that determine uh, you're going to fire somebody, hire somebody. You, this is inappropriate material to be teaching. And so I called up the that particular R representative from my area. It's like, what is going on? Why would you send a kid home with this mm. in my home? Because I love God. I'm, I'm not going to, I would want, you know, you have to understand, despite what everybody tells you in this world system and the people who say they're walking with God, but they're living like the world, that's offensive to God. Mm. To have a throne of another God that you're built, that's a very offensive, that's like, that's, that, you'll find out how offensive that is if you don't repent. And so I'm talking to him and I'm saying, stop it. You should not be sending, you do not send home God assignments with the kids to build thrones to other gods. I mean, you look at the people today, they're saying you can't pray in school, you can't do this. Like you're sending this kid home with a, a project to build a, a, a throne of a God while you're putting curtains around Jesus in the cross. I mean, think about it. it's like if you got this assignment, say, I want everybody in this classroom to build Jesus' throne. I mean, you'd have this huge uproar. But you send them home. And they say, oh, it's Greek mythology. It's Greek God mythology, false God mythology. Mm -hmm. That you should ask the parents. You should, you should involve them in the consequences of that. And so I'm like, I'm raising all kinds of mm -hmm. conversation, talking with them. And he was very kind, very nice and all that. And, um, but they did nothing. They continue with the agenda. They continue thinking it's no, you know, it's, you know, you can talk about all this different thing. And this is what got me the most. That kid was so intimidated. He was so scared that, that he would be rejected that obviously he didn't build it around me, mm. but he actually did do it. And he turned it in from his home. He turned it in because he didn't want the teacher to think bad of him. Teacher, you just place yourself as God over that kid, and you'll be held accountable for that. Well, why do you say that? Well, it makes me think about the, just recently when I talked about Elamis, when Paul was leading the pro council to, to uh, the Lord, and he was being drawn to the faith, and Elamis, one of his employees, came in and began to, to, to lead him away from Paul, trying to take him away from the faith. And he was blinded. Paul said, you are, you are of the devil. He said, is there anything good in you at all? And no matter how pretty you make it sound, that was evil to put yourself. That kid was more fearful of you than he was of God. And God saw that. And you know what he did? He did what you said and he laid it at your feet. This teacher down in South Florida that said, you know, write the name of Jesus and put it on, put it under your feet and step on it. Our God's not dead. No. Is that the movie? Yeah, God's not dead. God's, God's not, not dead. dead. You got to see that because it confronts all this. It'll, it'll, it'll give you great courage to be able to stand up for God because in your school, to your your faith, where you're not pushing your faith on other people, but you're standing up yourself for God. Despite if, if nobody stands up for God, you do. And you can do that. You got to see this. You're going to be shocked. This is from uh, KOMO Channel Four News. And like I said, you want to, may want to watch it first before you actually watch, have your kids watch it. But realize this is high school, so this is what your kids are potentially seeing taking place right here. Hello, everybody. An outraged mother is taking on a high school drama teacher who allowed a student award ceremony to turn vulgar. Couple for us, Mark Miller explains why that parent was so offended and what the school district is doing about it. She certainly knows how to draw the spotlight. I wouldn't want a teacher like that in my school. Drama club advisor Terry Grimes is in trouble. You know, in the moment, she may not have realized. She's in trouble after her award ceremony at Bellingham High degenerated into what one parent described as a raj fest. The mother who attended with her 17-year-old daughter did not want to go on camera to spare her high school senior any stress before graduation. But she shared the night's vulgarities in a couple of emails with Como 4 News. And she shared even more with me on the phone. 
The parent says Grimes and some of her students on stage used the F word and other profanities and performed a skit about a priest wanting to have sex with kids. Then there were the awards for horniest stud and horniest girl, with the winner presented with what appeared to be a box of sex toys. She has one of those really fun, outgoing personalities. This senior was not there, but she belonged to drama club last year and loved her teacher. People make mistakes, and hers just happened to be public. Terry Grimes apologized today after a meeting with the principal and drama students. In a written statement released by the district, she says, as a teacher and the club's leader, I take full responsibility and am extremely sorry. She did the right thing by apologizing, and um, in my opinion, I don't think it needs to go further. The outraged mother who blew the whistle says she's satisfied and hopes her complaint will assure student award ceremonies don't go down that road ever again. In Bellingham, Mark Miller, Como 4 News. This is shocking. Hmm. This is shocking. You put so much effort into raising your kids, and by the way, this is really minor what our kids are being exposed to. But that's your school. Those teachers work for you. They don't work for the federal government. They work for your they work for you. And then you have representative government called the school board and the superintendents or ever how you run your schools that you elect them, your city council, ever how that happens. And you can go to them and say, deal with this. We're not going to have this in the schools. We're just not going to have it. And if they don't represent you well, you can actually just say, we want somebody that represents our values. Yeah. I mean, think how major this is. And so think about this teacher right here, this particular teacher, and you're going to be able to be able to contact her right off the VFN torch. But she writes a letter of apology, and that's all she does, you know, writes a couple lines of apology, and then they then nothing else happens. Do you see the strategy? Do you see the plan? Do you see the unfolding of all these tactics? Do you see what's taking place right here? I mean, are you going to be surprised when all of a sudden this – Thief comes in and, and just like a bandit steals our nation mm. out from under us. We have to wake up. We have to begin to re remember our Constitution that this is a government by the people and for the people. And people are saying with all these unions and, and education, they're saying like we're the ones that control here. And it's like, no, not really, because it's a representative government. We just need to change our leadership mm. if you're not going to change and line up with the people. Right? So we're just talking about this particular high school at uh, Bellington High School. I believe it was in Washington that just, it was just horrific what took place. You know, I just want to encourage you to get involved, show up at your school board meetings. You can watch them now pretty much. Most people have a, a broadcast happening of them and just make it a point that you just show up at the meetings virtually mm -hmm. or physically and have input and don't. And when you're talking to your representative government, you know, honor their places of position that because the community chose them to be in leadership there, but don't be intimidated by them. Speak truth to them in, in, in honor and just say, um, this doesn't need to happen. This is not the proper way to be able to do this. And if they insist, they go, you know, well, that's not what we think. We're just going to go this way with it. That's, that's what they can do. But what you can do when it comes time for the election coming up, you can say, okay, we're going to find somebody with our values, somebody that lines up with our value system in the context of that. Not any party or anything like that. Who stands up for our values? Who values our children? And in, a, and in a banquet like that and doing that says so somebody does not value our kids or their mm -mm. future mm -mm. or the parents or the community. So you want to be able to do something about it. Speaking yeah. of that, and of course, they're being exposed to so much today with vulture, virtual world and, and, and iPads and iPhones yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And they're sort of like the Slender Man, right? Yes. Two girls, two young girls, uh, age 12, actually st uh, stabbed in Wisconsin. What's this have to do with? Well, I'm about to tell oh. you, Slender Man. Slender Man, these, these girls, they stabbed uh, their one of their best friends, stabbed their best friend 19 times, 19 times because of an internet um, uh -huh. fictitious person called Slender Man. This mm -hmm. is, a, you know, this allegedly this is all coming out. It's being reported. Uh, ABC News is saying that uh, these 12 year old girls. They, they stabbed them. What they were trying to do as why they stabbed this girl is because of a fictional character named Slender Man, and they were carrying out the killing because of him. Wikipedia says that the girls were, were doing it in order to basically win Slender Man's favor. Right. And so you have, and allegedly the girls found out about um, 
this fictitious person on the internet. They're reading these these horror stories. It goes deeper than that. That even the Blaze is reporting that they gave iPads uh, to to the students, and they said, uh, "Don't go outside these boundaries." Mm. And that's I mean, yeah. Give me a break. Yes. Yeah. So that based on reports from the Blaze, that's actually what they did. They gave them the um, the iPads that led them into this whole thing. Yeah. Wow. And and they are given iPads. I mean, my my son attended a middle school where they gave every child an iPad. And so my questions were like, well, hey, let's have some talk about this. Right. What are the mm-hmm. safeties? What are the things you can put on it? And I, I made sure that I adapted the iPads where it was, you know, just right. protective. But it was only the, the iPad was, o- was only protected while they were in school. So the kid can take it home, download whatever they want and bring it back into the school. No telling how, the, you know, now we know that the girls had access to it from the school. But they're reading these stories. And, and what's being reported is that... Uh, the girls wanted to prove that Slender Man was actually real, and she wanted to sp- uh, prove this, the skeptics wrong. And the Slender Man is is this fictitious. Uh, they've made drawings of him. as this extremely long uh, character of a man. He has no face. Um, they, they, he can be recognized, and he has some mm. tentacles that come out from his back. And in in these little horror stories that they were reading, apparently that if if you kill on his on his behalf. Then you you get rewarded. You have some sort of a of a favor, and it's just like what is going on? What is happening uh, to our children? It says uh, it, basically they wish to commit a murder as a first step to becoming quote unquote proxies of Slenderman, and this is what's being shared with the authorities. They're still investigating, which is exactly with Moloch and all the other things yeah. that were driven in the past for you know giving these sacrifices of children, and this is this happens. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're happy to, to report that the young girl that was stabbed, she was found by, by a passerby, a person who was riding their bike, and they've upgraded her condition to fair now. She, she did survive the stabbing, but now we have to deal with the fallout of how is it that two 12-year-old, three 12-year-old girls are having a sleepover, and it was this sleepover and, and this Slenderman result in one young girl being stabbed 19 times. Left for uh, dead. Night. I mean, there's so much evil to be able to, to do it, first of all, but then to continue to do it. Yeah. Uh, allegedly, some re- there are some reports that uh, one of the young girls involved said that for some reason she felt feels no remorse. And you're looking at an image of uh, one of the images of what Slender Man looks like. Listen, we need to be aware. We need to be uh, watchful of what our children are being exposed to. In an, in just previously, we were just speaking about the things that th- that's happening in schools, what's being allowed in plays. But listen, what's happening at home? I, I've seen so many young people have free reign of the internet. You have iPads, iPhones, Android, tablets, computers. We have some segments too on the VFN Torch. You got to go back and listen to about the statistics of that. Yes, and how that when the parent walks into the room. What and the kids were surveyed that the first thing they do is switch screens or they clear their cash, yeah. they do all these different things, mm-hmm. and the parents just says, Oh, they're doing their homework, right? You know, somebody with like a D mm-hmm. doing their homework, <laughs> just right. studying. You know, yeah. a man's going in the store, like, I need a Pentium 7 million and a, right. and a uh-huh. screen, all that kind of stuff. And the boy can't even type, exactly. Like, don't give him a mouse, yeah. don't give him a mouse, <laughs> save his soul. In fact, they say studying said the children's first exposure to pornography comes as a result of quote unquote looking for homework, doing homework assignments on the internet. Mm-hmm. And so, we want to encourage you to get all kind of uh, pr- uh, protective software for your computers. You know, for your children, they have them for for mobile devices as well as your internet. One that we've we've recommended in the past is Be Secure. We'll make sure that's related for you um, on the torch. But this is this brings up a serious issue that we need to be aware of. That listen, we cannot let our children just see and be a part of anything. Now you have three children's lives that will be forever affected by this. One who was stabbed nineteen times, and the the other two that were involved in this stabbing. Right. How do, how do we deal with this now? Well, imagine society and you know, what society it already is something we just haven't unplugged it yet. But once you unplug it, what, it, what we've yeah. stirred up in the hearts and it makes me think about the days of Noah that he says, this is why the flood came. Evil was on the minds and hearts of everybody except for, I guess, Noah and his family mm-hmm. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you start thinking about if only the only thing that's on folks mind is evil. And this is just evil. It's like, 
one day these girls were sitting in their classroom right beside your daughter or your son and having lunch together in the lunchroom. They had the same books assigned to them. But one day, because of all this darkness that's coming in the schools, as we talked about in this early part of the program, think about it. They took your kid into the woods and stabbed them 16 times, 17, 19 19 times. While we're covering the cross up with a curtain or a box. Hmm. While we're saying you can't pray. But you can bring, it's like, it's a strategy. I mean, this is not a conspiracy theorist. It's it's an obvious strategy, and if we can't see that, we've been blinded by yeah. darkness. He says that he says the light shines in darkness, but the darkness doesn't even understand it. That's what he said. And when we're deceived, when we're walking around deceived, and we don't know, you know what uh, is uh, happening when it's really happening, but can't see it, we're deceived. And it's just amazing to me. It's like my goodness, dear Lord. And we talk about the shootings in our schools. We talk about the things taking place in the schools. And it's like, it's time for us to wake up and say, you know what? Don't put iPads in the schools. Yeah. Put pencils and paper and books. You know, we're finding out, some of the studies we're finding out is that uh, that this virtual ebook reading and all that type of stuff, that you don't have the ability to remember anymore. It's data in, but it doesn't come back out again. Mm-hmm. It's, not, it's not there. You don't have anything to recall it by because it's just like you're sitting there and just image after image is coming in front of you, but you didn't touch it. You didn't, you know, find it and that type of thing. And we talked about that before, but the fact is, is that um, why not just have them? It isn't it better to learn one thing right than 10 things wrong. Mm. We think, oh, we got to learn everything. Well, let's just learn like 10 things right and lose a hundred if we have to, but just, let's learn something like character. Yeah. Let's learn something like values. Let's learn something like the constitution um, so here are these schools that were doing the things that we're talking about, you know, this, this crazy award ceremony. And I want you to contact that school and to say, writing a letter of apology is not enough. You need to let those kids know that this is not the way you're going to live your life. That's, uh-huh. this was not right because those kids are going to be your tomorrow's congresswomen and congressmen. They're going to be your, your senators, your, maybe your next president. And they're going to remember this is what we did all the time in our schools. This is what we were taught. And nobody said nothing. And nobody said a thing. Doesn't mean people will, will follow, but at least it says, this is what God's word says. He says, he says, if you if you wait too late, you're bait. You gotta cry out for righteousness now. You gotta say, This is not right. Even if we were part of the wrong, we gotta say, I was wrong, I repented, I'm sorry, you know, but this is not right. We can't do this anymore. And if we'll do that, God will respond. But this is what he says in his word in the book of Isaiah. He says, but if we wait too late, and a lot of people are just waiting to the last second, and they're going to jump up when it, and they think that it's going to, uh, God's going to respond, but he's not going to respond at that point. Once the momentum's coming in, this darkness, he says, they will devour you. Mm. They'll devour you. Mm-hmm. And there was so much darkness when we began, we launched some, some years back, that we didn't know that how, what was going to happen in the context of that. But we did not want to be late with crying out. We wanted to at least be in the streets and the airways and, and all the ways that we are in television, radio, mm-hmm. crying out, just saying, come on, we can do better than this. This is what God wants for us. We can turn back to the original tent of the nation and the Lord. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfntv.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless. God bless.